Landing on a drone ship. It's a bold vision SpaceX has long had for Starship, and it's now been officially highlighted in a recent FAA document. But that leads to a bigger question. What happens next? How will Starship return home? This is a question many have been asking. And impressively, SpaceX already has a unique answer. Something they're calling horizontal transportation. So why is SpaceX choosing this method? What upgrades or changes will be needed to make it work? Let's explore the answers in today's episode of Great SpaceX. It's been two years since Starship's very first integrated test flight, and now we're on the brink of Flight 9. After countless upgrades and iterations, SpaceX has just taken another major step forward. The FAA has officially approved the Starship launch proposal at Starbase. This approval marks a critical milestone. It allows SpaceX to conduct up to 25 Starship launches per year from the site without mandatory delays for mishap investigations after every anomaly. That flexibility could drastically accelerate Starship's development and testing timeline. And with the upgraded launch pad and improved vehicles ready for action, a new era for Starship may be just around the corner. Equally important, the FAA document also outlines several designated landing zones for Starship operations strategically placed across the globe. These include offshore regions near Texas in the Gulf of Mexico, locations in the Indian Ocean, and two areas in the eastern Pacific Ocean. Notably, many of these zones are located over open water, and that reveals SpaceX's preferred landing method going forward, ocean recovery using a drone ship. This approach is explicitly detailed in the FAA's final tiered environmental assessment, confirming that SpaceX intends to apply the same successful recovery strategy it developed for Falcon 9. As many are already familiar, Falcon boosters land vertically on drone ships positioned offshore and are then transported back to the mainland for inspection, refurbishment, and eventual reuse. It's a system that has enabled dozens of reflights and dramatically lowered launch costs. But Starship, of course, introduces a whole new scale of complexity. Both Starship's upper stage and the massive Super Heavy booster are significantly taller and heavier than Falcon 9. While Falcon boosters are around 47 meters tall and weigh approximately 25.6 tons dry, Starship and Super Heavy stand at about 50 and 71 meters tall, respectively, and those figures may increase to 70 and 80 meters with future upgrades, as referenced in the FAA documentation. This scale creates a key logistical challenge. How do you safely transport such enormous vehicles once they've landed on a drone ship? At first, many assumed SpaceX would follow the same vertical recovery method used with Falcon. But that has now been officially ruled out. Instead, SpaceX will employ a safer, more stable solution, horizontal transportation. According to the final tiered EA, after landing and safing, the breakover fixture assembly, which involves controlled supported drop from vertical to horizontal of the Starship, commence. In simple terms, this means that after a successful landing and safety checks, Starship or Super Heavy will be gently tilted from a standing position into a horizontal one using specialized hardware. This will likely involve a crane winch system or mechanical pivot designed to lower the mass of vehicle safely and precisely. Why horizontal transport? Because transporting these giant stages vertically on a ship is simply too risky. Even Falcon 9, despite its shorter size and support from landing legs, has tipped over during transport on rough seas. Without legs, Starship vehicles lack the structural support to remain upright during long trips, especially when factoring in unpredictable ocean conditions. Given the sheer height and mass of Starship's components, any instability could result in catastrophic damage. Horizontal transport significantly reduces that risk. By securing the vehicle along its length, SpaceX can better stabilize it against swaying, rolling, or unexpected movements caused by waves or wind. Though this method may reduce how many vehicles can be transported at once, safety and reliability clearly take priority at this stage of development. And with no current need to move starships in bulk, that's a trade-off SpaceX seems happy to make. 
Once the vehicle is placed horizontally, it'll be firmly strapped and locked into position on the drone ship's deck. Every step will be monitored and precisely executed to ensure there's no unnecessary stress on the structure during the process. It's a demanding task that will require sophisticated coordination and equipment, but it's one that promises a much higher success rate for post-landing recovery. In the long term, this approach could play a critical role in achieving SpaceX's goal of rapid reusability. It enables safe transport back to shore for inspection, maintenance, and reflight, potentially allowing SpaceX to ramp up Starship's flight cadence over time. So what do you think of this horizontal recovery strategy? Do you support SpaceX's new approach? If so, let us know by commenting let's do it down below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel for more updates as we follow every stage of SpaceX's Starship journey from liftoff to landing and beyond. If SpaceX fully commits to transporting Starship horizontally after ocean landings, a significant amount of planning and infrastructure will be needed. To start, SpaceX must determine what kind of vessels will handle transportation. It remains unclear whether Starship stages will be carried directly on the drone ship after landing or transferred onto separate transport vessels. Either option would require a large fleet to support rapid launch cadence. For example, each designated landing region would need at least two operational ships, one to return a landed vehicle while the other remains in position for upcoming missions. This redundancy will be vital, especially with the FAA now authorizing up to 25 Starship flights per year, translating to roughly two or more launches each month. And as Starship scales up, that number will only grow. One concept that SpaceX could explore is a supersized transport vessel similar in size to an aircraft carrier. This idea was recently hinted at by John Edwards, SpaceX VP, in reference to handling Falcon Heavy boosters. A massive ship capable of holding multiple Super Heavy boosters or starships could streamline recovery and reduce turnaround time between missions. Each drone ship or transport vessel will also need a specialized system to shift the landed vehicle from a vertical to a horizontal position. These mechanisms must be both compact and robust, capable of safely handling vehicles that weigh hundreds of tons while maintaining stability in ocean conditions. Additionally, SpaceX might integrate a deluge system similar to those used on launch pads to reduce heat and pressure effects during and after landing. The biggest challenge, however, lies in the structural demands. Starship and Super Heavy produce extreme thrust and carry enormous weight, especially during landing. These transport systems must be engineered to endure repeated impacts over long-term operations. Unlike Falcon 9, the Starship system is larger and more complex, raising the bar for both durability and flexibility. Another key design consideration is the lack of landing legs. Currently, both Starship stages rely on ground-based or tower-assisted recovery. If they are to land on a drone ship and transition horizontally, there must be a support system in place. Adding permanent legs could interfere with horizontal transport. One possible solution is a foldable landing leg system, legs that deploy for landing and retract or fold away before the vehicle is laid down for transport. This kind of system could also benefit future Moon or Mars landings, where soft surface touchdowns will be required. That said, implementing foldable legs is no small task. It would require major redesigns of the aft section, including structural reinforcements, hydraulics, and possibly rearranged plumbing or engine configurations. Finally, SpaceX will need international cooperation. While U.S. coastal regions like the Gulf of Mexico or the Pacific are within U.S. jurisdiction, other planned recovery zones, such as the Indian Ocean and regions off South Africa, will require diplomatic agreements and support from nearby countries. Australia may be a willing partner, but coordination with South American nations remains uncertain and could pose logistical or regulatory hurdles. If these challenges are successfully addressed, SpaceX could significantly enhance the potential for Starship landings on drone ships. First and foremost, landing at sea greatly increases operational safety. The ocean provides a natural buffer zone, reducing the risk to people, infrastructure, and surrounding environments in the event of a landing failure. If a problem arises during descent, the rocket can be diverted into the sea, minimizing potential damage and avoiding hazards on land. Secondly, drone ship landings allow SpaceX to optimize flight performance. By eliminating the need for a fuel-consuming return to a land-based site, more propellant can be allocated toward carrying heavier payloads 
or achieving higher orbits. This improves overall mission efficiency and gives SpaceX greater flexibility in designing future flight profiles. Thirdly, drone ships add unmatched flexibility to recovery operations. Because these vessels are mobile, they can be positioned virtually anywhere at sea to align with the flight trajectory. This dynamic placement makes recovery easier and more precise, particularly when launching to high energy or polar orbits. It's a distinct advantage that static land-based landing zones simply cannot offer. SpaceX has already demonstrated the global potential of this approach by partnering with countries like the Bahamas to expand recovery capabilities. With Starship, the company is aiming even higher. As outlined in the FAA's final tiered environmental assessment, SpaceX has identified multiple offshore landing zones around the world, confirming its intention to scale the strategy for larger vehicles. Previously, the main obstacle to drone ship landings was post-landing transport, especially for massive stages like Super Heavy and Starship. However, with the adoption of horizontal transportation, SpaceX now has a safer and more feasible way to return these vehicles to shore for refurbishment and reuse. Looking ahead, this strategy could easily extend to SpaceX's operations in Florida. In fact, the FAA's environmental impact statement for Starship at Kennedy Space Center includes drone ship recovery as an approved landing method. This means SpaceX may soon implement a dedicated infrastructure for horizontally transporting recovered stages from sea to its Florida facilities. With safety, flexibility, and performance benefits all aligned, drone ship landings paired with horizontal transport could become a cornerstone of Starship's rapid reusability in the near future. The enhancement of drone ship landings will add flexibility to SpaceX's operations. With reliable sea and tower-based landings, the company can adjust based on mission type, location, or weather. Once recovery and transport logistics are optimized, SpaceX will have the freedom to push Starship higher, farther, and more frequently, bringing us closer to a truly reusable spaceflight future. So, let's watch closely and see what new milestones they'll reach next. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Thank you so much for tuning in, and remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will always follow you as long as you keep looking up.